everyone. Happy Creative Mornings Friday. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. <laughs> so can I get a show of hands? Who used to come to Creative Mornings when it was St. Pete? Heck yeah, that's awesome. Welcome back. We are now the Tampa Bay chapter. So just for those who have not been to Creative Mornings before, so let's show of hands. Who hasn't been to a Creative Mornings? Awesome, welcome. Glad to have you, your inaugural Creative Mornings. Uh, so we are a global organization. In case you were not aware, we actually started 15 years ago in New York City. And since then, we have grown a lot. We have over 200 chapters throughout the world. We are volunteer run, community led, and focused on what our community wants to see. We partner with the local community and make sure that everything is always free. So just want to make sure you all know what we're here, what we're doing, and why it's so important that we provide this to everyone. So the Creative Mornings Manifesto, uh, it is the creed of Creative Mornings. It is everyone is creative, everyone is welcome. So anytime anyone might look at you, or even today if you've met someone like, oh, I'm not a creative, but I'm here just supporting, everyone is creative. It's really important we all remember that because we all come from all sorts of different backgrounds. Whatever you're doing, it is created creative and again everyone is here so bring a friend next time if you didn't today or they weren't sure what what this weird thing was about with a girl wearing a donut crown on her head bring them next time tell them it's a good time we want everyone to come out in this city we used to be um, in St. Pete it was about 200 people strong at its height and so we want to see that back out here again all right, so for Creative Mornings Tampa Bay, uh, just wanted to give a shout out to the fact that we are now the Tampa Bay chapter in case you followed us with St. Pete. So all of our socials now are at CM underscore Tampa Bay. Our email is at Tampa Bay at creativemornings.com. The reason we changed is to be more inclusive. If y'all know Tara, she was the previous host and she in all of her wisdom knew that we needed to have a fresh start. We needed to expand. We also needed to show that we have grown as our city has grown over the years. And so Tampa Bay is what we have done to be more inclusive. We know we have a lot of friends that are creative over on the Tampa side that make their way over here to St. Pete. So you will be seeing programming over in St. Pete as well next year. So look out for that as well. All right. And these are our socials. So obviously, don't all rush up here to get this uh, nifty QR code. But later, you can absolutely scan it. We'll have it at the end. We have a link tree again. Make sure you're getting our newsletters, emails. Make sure you're staying up to date on what we're doing. That way, more people can be here. You can share it with everyone. I just want to shout out our partners as well. You are enjoying all of the uh, bagels from Pete's Bagels. Our wonderful space is here with Green Bench. Thank you so much, Green Bench. We have Tabella, as well as Mother Kombucha and Black Crow Coffee. So just want to shout out our awesome partners, and as well as our AV Village over here with Roundhouse Creative. So none of this could be done without our partners. All right, and then our talented friends. If you have not made a stop by Gio's typos yet, Gio is an amazing local poet. You'll see him throughout Tampa and St. Pete as well. And obviously, Mike Tony official, great, getting all the jams. He was at Hoochin Hive this past Monday, so look out for him. And at this point, I would also like to share why Zach and I, <laughs> why are we the ones up here restarting Creative Mornings? Um, if you know us, then you might know our story began with Creative Mornings. It was January of 2019 at the Surreal Talk uh, that the owner of Pete's Bagels was actually giving. And uh, on this, so you, for those that are far away, what you can see is the back of my head in one of these photos, because that's what made it into the archive. But Zach's really killer smile made it into the archive, so that's cool. Um, so his killer smile's up here, the back of my head's up here. And at that talk is where I first saw a really tall, curly-headed cutie walking up the aisle to hang out with Billy Mays and do a mouth council, if you know what that is. It is super cool. Um, hopefully when Billy comes back into town, we can get him back. So he went up, he did a mouth council, didn't approach him at the time. He was with our friend Brian, Brian Wave. Brian, he was with our friend Brian, and Billy promoted a, a show that he was gonna do at Green Bench that night. He was here, I saw this cutie bopping his head inside a uh, Green Bench where Billy was performing. I was like, eh, I think that's the guy I saw earlier. My friend told me to go up to the bar and try and like, hit on him essentially, which I ended up doing. And my opening line was, didn't I see you at Creative Mornings this morning? And from that, we've been together ever since and we're married now and 
Yeah, celebrating almost uh, five years together. So we really do have Creative Mornings and Green Bench to thank for that. Um, so it's really special and dear to us that we are not only now the hosts of this chapter, but also that we're here in what feels like the beginning of our love story. So thank you for feeling the love with us. So now to get us going, uh, we are going to invite our friend Gio up to talk about a, or to recite a poem on endurance. This is way too tall. I'm a short guy. Okay. So when I was thinking about writing this poem on endurance, I was thinking less about the, um, the bigger moments and more about the tiny details that it takes to get there. Uh, so I called this everyday endurance. I'm often humbled by the infinite amount of dishes I will clean in, an, in a lifetime, hoping for a standing ovation every time I reach the last wear in my sink. Or what about the trip to the laundromat, doing everything in my power to make it fun, but all I can do is endure, folding each garment at a time very similar to the way I live my life. I look out and wonder about the durability of each individual here and how the tread on your sneakers slowly erodes, but you still found the heart to show up and smile. Because what comes after lacing of the shoes, after your everyday routine of putting your soul in gear to move forward, are little slivers of euphoria. They are the tiny pieces of tinder helping you build your fire of bliss. They are the tiny dances that only you know exist. They are the satisfied grins on the road to accomplishment. They are the happiness cocktails you drink with friends. They're the everyday details where endurance lives, creating euphoric moments, or better yet, reasons to live. Thank you, Gio. And we will take that and we put it in our newsletter and share it with everyone as well so that we continue to have it. So thanks, Gio, making it special as always. So for endurance, it is a global theme. So in case for those that aren't aware, again, our manifesto is everyone's creative, everyone is welcome. We all also share the same theme. So globally, we choose one theme and all 235 chapters take a riff on that theme. We are given like a little blurb on what HQ kind of took from that word, but it's really dependent on what the chapter does. And so for endurance this month, it was chosen by the Timisora chapter in Romania. And the blurb about it was endurance is the unwavering flame that burns within us, illuminating a path through darkness and uncertainty. It is the quiet strength that emerges when challenges test our limits, urging us to push beyond what we thought possible. Endurance is not a mere moment, but a relentless spirit that whispers, keep going, when the world feels heavy. In a world that values insistent, instant gratification, and endurance is a reminder that most rewarding victories are born from patience and perseverance. It is the ability to rise, even when we fall, and to embrace the transformative power of resistance. So let us celebrate that tenacity that resides within us, for in us is in the face of diversity, it is endurance that leads us towards the summit of our potential. So that is what brought us here today. And I am so excited to introduce our speaker, Nathan Stonecipher. He is the co-owner of Green Bench. He, I'm so happy he was able to be our first speaker today. Nathan is a local to St. Pete, born and raised. He is very active here in our community. Uh, you've probably seen him all around. He just had a very busy weekend here with all of the different events that were happening. Hopefully you guys got to come out and see them as well. So without further ado, I will let Nathan take it over. Thank you. Good morning. You know, I always get nervous following extremely talented people. We had Gio up here and Mike Tony, which is kind of, you know, Mikey, following Mikey is my worst nightmare. And I always say that, and I don't know how it happened that today was the day that I was going to directly follow uh, Mike Tony. Mikey came to us right after COVID, right after we uh, reopened the brewery from COVID another Brian Skank connection. It seems like you're connecting everybody in St. Petersburg, which is great. That's why we love you. Um, and I always tell the story and Mikey gets, uh, I think, mad that I bring it up all the time. But his first job here was the gatekeeper to keep people flowing in and out when we were still separating people from COVID. 
which was the most miserable job you can have. There's nothing worse than you could have done that you could have done than tell people that they can't enter a business that they're trying to get into and they need to queue up in line over here. And the first day I met him, I saw how nice he was and friendly. And I was like, this guy is not going to last a week here. And here he is still working at Green Bench, still crushing it. Yeah, thanks, Mikey. Uh, it's a privilege to be up here this morning, and uh, I'm excited to be speaking on endurance. I'm almost 42 years old now, and Green Bench just celebrated our 10-year anniversary a few weeks ago, so I feel like I have a, a tiny bit of wisdom to share. Not much, but a little bit, um, and that's what 42 uh, young years gets you, I guess, in a few years in business, too. I think... Um, when we talk about the brewery and all things related to Green Bench, a lot of people have heard that story before. We have a lot of information out there about it. And I'm going to touch on a little bit of, uh, about that today. Uh, and we can dig more into it afterwards and in the Q&A. But I'd really like to speak a little more broadly this morning on endurance and what I think it means for us as individuals, but also as, uh, for us as a community. Uh, that's kind of what's on my heart and what I, what I think... Um, the message should be as we move into a new year in 2024 and continue on growing this beautiful place that we all live in and I think that we all love and are really passionate about. Uh, so my name is Nathan and I just came to the realization like a year ago maybe that I'm a creative. I used to come to creative mornings and I'm like, that's not me. I'm, I'm the numbers guy, I'm the finance guy. My background is in finance. I grew up in St. Petersburg went to St. Petersburg College and then University of Florida. Um, but my background was in finance and I started this brewery with two great business partners because we had a passion for beer, we had a passion for community and we wanted to bring those two things together. But I never looked at myself as somebody who was creative. And I think from lots of encouragement from people in our community and understanding more of who I am over the last few years, I finally realized that I am creative, just in different ways. Um, and so I'm a creative now, that's me. We can argue about it later, but I'm part of the group, so I feel good about it. Um, Green Bench was a labor of love from day one. And when we first opened this brewery, there weren't many uh, craft breweries in the state of Florida. I know that's hard to believe because there's a million of them now, uh, but it was something that was different and unique at the time uh, and something that we were really excited about. And what we talked mostly about over the beer itself was how do we create an environment where we can welcome people in, where people can have life events happen, like meeting your future spouse, uh, get married here, have baby showers here, meet new people here, network, build relationships. These were all the things that we thought were important when we first decided to open our doors. And to get there was a long and arduous process. And, you know, we'll talk about endurance as we go over the next 15 or 20 minutes. And you all are going to know a lot about endurance after having to listen to me talk for 20 minutes. So I think we're going to be learning together here, which is great. Um, but through the life of the brewery, I mean, we can touch on things and I'll give specific examples later of how much it takes to just keep going. Bree, I think in your poem and Gio, I think you touched on it, too. It's a, it's a, sometimes it's a minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day process to just put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward when you don't know exactly what's next. Um, it's not getting paid if you're a business owner sometimes and not knowing where the money's gonna come from to keep moving forward. Um, and it's, it's scary moments and scary nights, but there's also great joy and adrenaline that comes from all of these things. And there's so many stories of that through our lifetime here at Green Bench, um, and I'm really excited to be able to share some of those things with you. We also recently, just to give you a little more background, uh, formed a group called Orange Belt, which brought a cycling race to the Edge District last weekend. Uh, this was another passion project just born from, uh, I have a love for cycling. I thought St. Petersburg and the Tampa Bay area needed to have a nationally recognized event here. Uh, we did it in the Edge District. Thankfully, uh, we have great support from our local businesses here to try something new and do something different. Um, but that's also uh, another, another little avenue of, I think, people doing what they love and sharing it with those around us 
in trying to lift up uh, the neighborhood and the city uh, in our greater Tampa Bay area by trying new things. And that's what we all do. We try new things. Um, I think endurance has a lot of negative connotations when you think of that word, right? You think of suffering um, and needing to be steadfast uh, and really working your way through things to survive or move forward. Um, and I think sometimes it can be a bit of a scary word. And I wanna share today three different bullet points uh, of just realizations I've had over the years uh, about endurance and about, I think, perspective that's sometimes needed to successfully navigate and move yourself forward, whether it's with what you're creating individually uh, or at home, or if it's a small business, uh, if it's a project you're working on in the community, or it's just something with your family, uh, I think these things are important uh, to be able to keep moving forward and do it in hopefully a productive and fruitful way. Um, the first one I wanna share, and I know this is gonna blow your mind, this is really life-changing, um, but just so you know, the world we live in is not a perfect place. It's crazy, uh, and perfection, uh, we may disagree on this one, but this is my take. Perfection right now on this earth as we stand is not possible. And I think it's really, really important to understand that. That doesn't say you don't strive for more. That doesn't say we don't try to fix problems. That's not to say that we don't come up with creative ideas to make this a better place. But perfection in your business or with, with your relationships with others or with whatever it is you're doing isn't possible. And I think that's extremely important to understand because we can easily get discouraged and we can easily give up. We can easily get frustrated if we think that perfection is possible and that's the end goal. We can also work ourselves crazy because if we think we can achieve this thing that's perfect, we're always working. We're always striving to do that. And we're somehow going to be disappointed at the end of it because it's not quite going to happen. I think my perspective as a business owner is it's very hard to not fall into the trap of trying to find perfection. I look around this place now, then I see a million things that we need to improve on and do better. I see the palm trees uh, limbs are drooping and I'm wondering if the uh, sprinklers haven't been on at the right time. Uh, we always have things. The kids play with these pumpkins every day and throw them around and get them all out of place. Um, uh, the, the list of things that we can improve on here is through the roof. It's crazy, right? And that can keep you up at night. But this place will never be perfect. Um, myself as a business owner, Chris, Steve, my partners, um, we're never going to be perfect at running this place. But we're going to try our hardest to improve every single day. But I can go home at night and hopefully fall asleep um, because I know we're making strides but I also know that the goal is within reach. The goal is not unreasonable. I'm not shooting for perfection anymore. I'm shooting to get better and I'm striving to get better. Uh, and I think it's really important to have that perspective in certain things. Uh, the other bullet point I'm gonna give you, uh, this also won't surprise anyone here, is I think if we understand now that perfection is not an option, I think the other important thing to understand is the majority of things that happen in our day-to-day -day lives is somewhat out of our control. We can control a lot. We think we can control a lot. We can plan, we can budget. Uh, we can do all the necessary things to um, remove as much risk as we can with what we're doing, but we still don't know everything that's gonna happen. There will be things that come up that we just can't account for. I'll, I, I don't need to mention COVID, that's the big one, right? Uh, I didn't see that coming. I don't think a lot of us saw that coming, but it changed everything and how our business operated, um, how we operated personally, and that came out of the blue. The, the, the unforeseen items that can arise are the norm. They're not out of the ordinary. I used to think that, I think for years, Chris and I would talk about what the next year at Green Bench looks like. And for a while, it was like every year, it's like, okay, we got through this this year. But next year, we're just going to operate. We're going to turn the light switch on. It's just going to run as we always thought it would. And we're just going to have a year where we can kind of sit back and watch this thing hum. That has never happened. 
not in 10 years. And so now I don't say that anymore. I know that's not going to happen. Um, it, that's not realistic. And I think just like understanding that you'll never reach perfection, I think understanding that every day, every year, things are going to arise that you couldn't account for and you didn't know were going to happen is critical because then you can flow with what happens. You can just, it's part of your business. I think as leaders in the community, as leaders of businesses, um, a lot of what we do is management and vision, right? We're painting a vision and we're trying to get people on board and buy into that. Uh, and that's important. I think the biggest thing we do as leaders and as, as um, um, business owners or creatives is we have to be uh, understanding of the unknown and ride that out when it happens and get creative um, and be positive in how we try to handle these things that come up and make our days more difficult. How do we turn those moments into opportunities? Um, so two, two things right there that I think paint the picture for where I want to go next, because um, to me, unless you understand those two things, you can't get to the third step. And the third step is talking about things that I think we can control, or at least things that we have more of an ability to control. And that has to do with our actions and our attitudes. Right. I think for all the things that we don't know about, what we what we can control are some simple things. Kindness, compassion, humility, empathy, optimism and working through what we're going through. Grace to others, service to our community, to our neighbors, collaboration, supporting those around us. I think. The focus switches as soon as you understand that perfection isn't possible, which should humble us. And as soon as you understand that there's going to be a lot of things that arise that you can't control, the focus should then switch to what can we control? What can I try to be better at myself and what can help me endure and go forward in any situation and with any group of people? Um, I think it gets missed often that this should actually be our focus and not necessarily all these other little things that we argue about passionately, which is great. Um, nothing wrong with a lively debate, um, but we can't miss the importance of helping each other out and of being in this together, especially as a community, because that's how we all endure going forward. A uh, great example, I I'm lucky to be part of the brewing community because from day one, uh, the brewers here locally and nationally, too, from what I've seen, for the most part, are extremely helpful, transparent with each other and collaborative. Uh, you all, if, if you know anything about craft beer, um, breweries are always doing collaborations together. They're always making beers together. Um, two companies coming together and making a beer and sharing it at both locations. The day we got our brew house, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, there was a group from Copper Tail, which hadn't opened yet. They were also under construction in Tampa. Their head brewer had worked at many breweries before. He brought a whole crew over, never told us he was coming, to help us offload all the equipment and set it into place and make sure we were doing things the right way so that we could get open and function. Um, we've in turn done the same thing with other breweries as, as, as they have opened. Um, I love that this industry is so helpful and collaborative. And I think all of us as industries can do the exact same thing. Copper Tail wasn't worried about, oh, what if Green Bench makes really good beer and they take some of our sales away? Their concern was how do we help this small business that's spending a lot of money and time and effort to do this cool thing um, and to build community, how can we help them? And how can we go lift them up and make sure that they succeed in what they do, or at least have the best chance to succeed in what they do? Um, that resonated with me. And the help continues with breweries uh, and with others. Another great example from just this past weekend, a uh, poor, uh, I don't know if you've met uh, Ariana yet, she's opening the Sourdough Co. Um, right next to Intermezzo. Uh, she just signed a lease on uh, the old karma space three weeks ago. And I went over to introduce myself and it was immediately a, Hey, by the way, uh, I had talked to the business owner uh, or the property owner about using your space for something for this bike, crazy bike race I'm doing. Oh, by the way, I'm also shutting down all the streets in the neighborhood on Saturday. So I hope that doesn't affect you. I said, I know you're having 
equipment delivered, you're interviewing employees, you're trying to clean the space, you're trying to get set up, but would you mind if on this Saturday you gave me the keys to your building and I used your space because that was the deal I had with the property owner. And after she looked at me like I was crazy, she said, yeah, I can do that. I'll shuffle my schedule around. As long as you leave it as you found it, no problem. And before she left on Friday, she handed me the key to the door and said, have fun, use it however you want. That is the exact attitude that I think we should all try to emulate. The stress that she has right now trying to get her business open is through the roof. And she took a moment and paused and said, is it good for the neighborhood? Is it gonna help my neighbor? Yeah, go ahead, do it. And that blew me away. And so guess who's gonna be her biggest advocate, right? For the next few months as she gets open, um, I'm gonna speak very highly of her, uh, especially because she allowed us to do what we needed to do. Um, but it's little, it's little moments like that and those really add up. And that helps me endure because that was one more thing that I needed support on that I couldn't do on my own that someone else helped me out with. So how do I wanna tie these things up, right? Because I think looking at it from a 30,000 foot view, this is kind of the important part. And I guess this is where I need my notes so I don't really screw up. Um, I think by understanding that perfection can't be achieved and by realizing the unex that the unexpected is a constant, it should naturally put us in a posture of humility and soften us in our care, perspective, and treatment of ourselves and others. How do we endure as a community, as creatives, as business owners, as leaders? Through this lens, we build relationships and offer help. We talk to each other face-to-face, -face, hopefully. That helps a lot, by the way. And we take time to see the needs of others. We use part of our time to focus our energy outward. Um, and we can do this because if we're not obsessed with hitting perfection because it can't happen, we can leave work and have more time to do other things and help other people around us or spend time at home with their family. What if St. Petersburg wasn't just known for the beautiful waterfront, for our walkable downtown, for the beaches and for the really cool, unique businesses and artists that we have here? What if what we became known for and what we are known for is the people who are here and our attitudes toward each other? I believe that that's something that will make us endure as a city, as a community, as business owners. I think that's what we should be working towards. And I think we can't control how high the rents go. We can make efforts to try to make changes to make it better. We can't control a lot of things, but we can control our actions and our attitudes with one another and I think that's what will continue to make St. Petersburg completely different than every other city in the U.S., which is why most of us are here. We love this place. Uh, I was lucky enough to be born here, so I've seen a lot of changes over the years. And for, for us who have been here forever, it's so encouraging and it fills us with so much energy to see so many new people coming in. And I think what we need to foster as those who live here and are residents and who work here is foster that attitude, foster those actions, help encourage that so that we can all grow together. Um, so that's, that's where I, I think of endurance. I think of endurance as something that um, um, we can only do with some of these things. There's a million other items, right? You could, you could do a uh, hundred bullet points of what it takes to succeed and push forward and, and move through and how do you deal with difficulties and struggles. But to me, those are critical. And if we can just focus on a few of those, I think we'll live in a much better place because of it. Um, we already live in a great place, so we don't have that far to go. Um, that's the majority of what I wanted to say. Uh, we can open it up to questions as well, if that's okay. I don't know. That was about 20 minutes. I think I did okay there. What? Does, yeah, first off, big round of applause. <laughs> For Nathan. Heck yeah. Does anyone have a question? Want to start us off? Don't be shy. This is Anything. like the best part. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, Hold how on. How do you start like, your uh, business? Then? Oh, sorry. Just sorry about that. Press testing, testing. Okay. How did you start your business by any chance? Like yeah, so the short story is um, we... Myself, Chris Johnson, who's there in the back, I think I see him over there. Um, myself, Chris, and Steve Duffy 
um, got together. Um, we were passionate about brewing. Chris, obviously the most passionate, um, he, uh, he had been brewing at, at uh, Southern and Cigar City in Tampa. Uh, Steve and I were just brewing in the garage and no one would ever want to try our beer. Um, so it was probably the smartest move I made was not being, trying to be the brewer here. That is not my talent. Um, but we wanted to put together a business that we could grow in our downtown and in our neighborhood uh, in an area where at the time there wasn't a lot going on um, in the Edge District. But we saw the potential. Some others who came before us saw the potential. Ferg's, of course, has been here forever. Leslie Curran had a spot here uh, for many years before there were many businesses out here. And again, uh, it was how do we brew really unique, high quality beer and keep it consistent? And how do we create an authentic place uh, that welcomes in um, our community? And from uh, having to update zoning laws uh, because we didn't have the correct zoning in the city of St. Pete to have a brewery or manufacturing space and a tap room. Uh, that, that was a six to seven month process from raising the money, um, some private equity uh, from some silent investors and then a small SBA loan to just get this place open and off the ground. Um, to, you know, speaking of, of unknowns happening, um, Chris came along after Steve and I had kind of been working on getting the zoning changed and uh, another, another person we had been working with decided last minute he didn't want to be a part of the project anymore. And that really threw us for a loop. This was like two weeks before we were supposed to go hard on the money we had raised and actually start the process. Uh, but through that, we met Chris, and we had already known Chris, but Chris is working on another project. Well, Chris's project fell through right at the same time our third partner um, fell out of the deal. And it, was, it, it worked beautifully. We couldn't have done this without Chris. Um, and so from that moment where we thought all was lost and it was all going to fall apart before we even started construction, here comes Chris Johnson the best partner we could have ever asked for. And I think the best brewer, one of the best brewers in the U S and uh, it's worked out beautifully ever since. Yeah. Endurance. Endurance. Right. Keep moving forward. Yeah. Hi. So thank you so much for your words today. And I think that you spoke it beautifully for everybody here who loves St. Pete. Um, my question is how is your, why, for starting Green Bench different from the why that you used to operate your business today? Mm, that's a really good question. I think the why is very similar, although I think, so I'll say this, where we are right now is not at all where I envisioned we would be 10 years ago. I think 10 years ago when we started this place, um, aside from those two kind of critical components I spoke of, brewing high quality beer and creating a community gathering place that was open to everyone, um, the other side of that was how do we become profitable and grow this brand um, and have a regional brewery by the time we're, you know, let's call it 10 years old, where we are right now. Um, the craft beer market changed a lot in the last 10 years. COVID changed a lot of things. I think to, to your question, we changed a lot. Our focus became a lot more community focused as we dug into this. Um, and we really decided early on let's forget about growing fast. Let's grow deliberately and consistently in like equal steps every year so that we never get too far ahead of ourselves. And so we can still focus on what we think is important and what we're passionate about. So almost like clockwork, every year we grow by about a thousand barrels of beer, thousand barrels of beer, thousand barrels of beer, um, minus COVID years. And um, that was the biggest change was we went from this mindset of we want to be a regional player and we're going to be the biggest brewery in the southeast and we're going to do it this way to let's just take it at one step at a time. Let's slow this down. Let's focus on the area around us. Let's focus on the product we're making and let's just slowly grow this thing. Um, so that's if that answers the question. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned um that brewery, or like, I guess Chris is the master brewer. Um, if that is not your talent, what is your talent? And then within those 10 years, what would your top three accomplishments would say like, that you're most proud of? Wow, these are really good questions. So what, what are my talents? I'm still figuring that out. Um, I don't know what all my talents are. 
Um, so I'm good at um, setting a vision, I think, and being able to uh, work towards that. A big piece of that, is, though, is having the right team around you, not just business partners. But, you know, what's beautiful about where we are now versus 10 years ago is that we have 30 employees here. Each employee is really passionate about what we do. And so now instead of it just being my idea and how do we implement this or Chris's idea and how do we do this, we have all these people that bring us ideas and we have all these people that we can bounce things off of to get there. Um, so that's been one of the coolest changes um, as far as what I've seen in the last 10 years. But um, I know I'm, I'm good at the boring stuff too. I'm really good at spreadsheets, um, budgeting, controlling the finances. Do what? You can make numbers tell a story. I can make numbers tell a story. Um, I, and, and going back to the comment of I'm a creative, I think, I think on a broader level, um, I have a lot of different ideas of things that I want to do in this city, whether it's Green Bench related or a little bit different, like the bike race in Orange Belt. Um, and I enjoy doing those things. I was on uh, the board of trustees at St. Petersburg College for eight years. I actually just retired from that last month. And that's actually the my favorite thing that I've done in the last 10 years was volunteer there and do that. Um, and one thing I think I did learn while I was there is I think I'm good at um, listening to two different sides and finding a middle ground where we can move forward with some sort of compromise. Um, at least that seemed to be my role on the board. And I think I do that a lot here too. Uh, we have a lot of opinions and a lot of um, uh, heated debates sometimes about what we should be doing. Um, and so I think I have an ability to listen to a lot of different ideas and try to narrow it down to, okay, let's do this. Cause it's kind of what you're saying and it's kind of what you're saying. And I think I understand um, the motivation behind both of these things and let's move forward in this direction. Um, and then, Top three accomplishments? I, I don't know. I think COVID was the first time I got to sit in this beer garden and enjoy what we had created. So for, for everything that I really didn't like about that time, and there's a lot of things, um, there was a moment um, where I was in the beer garden and there was no one here. My wife was here. Sarah was here. Sarah, by the way, is in the back. She's had um, a business on Central Avenue for 13 14 years now. So yeah, she's done more to endure than I have. Um, and she's seen a lot more changes than I have too, uh, especially on the 600 block. But Sarah and I were sitting in the beer garden and there was not a single person here. And I just got to sit and we had to drink the beer that was here or else it was gonna go bad. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. And we just sat out here and had a few beers and we're just kind of talking about, you know, it was our first chance to just slow down and have nothing going on and kind of talk about what we created. So that was a really cool moment for me. Um, I think some of the collaborations we've done over the years has been um, um, kind of pinch me moments, um, you know, working with New Belgium and Jester King and uh, Allagash out of Maine and like some, some brewers that we hold in really high regard, having them come here to visit us because they want to brew beer with us. That's been amazing. But honestly, the, the best part, and Chris and Steve and I talk about all the time is, is what what this place has become the amount of groups in here the diversity of people we see in our space um the amount of events we have uh that's beautiful i mean walking out here on a friday afternoon and there's like kids playing over here and there's a 90 year old gentleman sitting on the bench and there's you know some group of bros coming in for a bachelor party and then there's like a a, a uh, yeah, like it's crazy. And, and we love that. Like, that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted when we built this space. And one of our favorite things to hear is, you know, when people come up to and they're like, yeah, I've got family coming in town for Thanksgiving and we're going to go to the pier and we're going to go to the Dolly and then we're going to bring them to Green Bench. And I'm like, we're like, we're like on that top 10 list of places to go. If you have family in town and you don't know what to do, then you're going to kill each other if you stay at the house too long. So that's really cool. That's what we get, I think, the most pleasure out of. Enjoy. Hey, how you doing? Good. So on the topic of endurance and also you being a numbers guy, um, I, I run my own business. And I think one thing that I've run into is what was the point where you came closest to running out of money? And <laughs> which, which time? <laughs> 
the worst. And how did you get out of that hole? What were the steps that you took to kind of get yourself back into a, a, a point where you could continue to endure? Um, it was probably two, two and a half years into the business. And um, we had, we, well, we can talk about the distribution industry in the state of Florida another time, but we had a lot of distributors who um, um, we had invoices out to, and we hadn't been paid. Payroll was coming up and that was at, at the time where the every day it was a it was a shuffle of like what check is being cashed today and how much money is in the bank account. And um, I ended up not one of my um, proudest moments, but I ended up um, cashing out the 401k that I had at the time or the IRA I had at the time um, to float the business because I knew we, we would have the cash coming in. I just didn't know when it was coming in and we needed to bridge the gap. Um, and I didn't tell my wife about it because I didn't want to freak her out. And that was a mistake. Um, <laughs> we try to be more transparent now. Um, but that, that was, that was the closest, um, I think. And that was, there was like a four to eight week period where, um, I was on edge all the time. And, um, you know, when COVID first happened, uh, that's when, you know, my, my job for the next four weeks was how much cash do we have in the bank? How do I get more cash in the bank just in case? Because I think when they first shut us down, they said it was going to be for like two weeks or something. Yeah. And I was like, well, I don't think that's going to happen. So um, how to, and I was afraid we had a we had a line of credit with the bank since we're a manufacturing facility. So uh, I immediately drew all of that down because banks at any time can just say no to the line of credit, even if you have it there. So I wanted to make sure we had that money in the bank account just in case. And that, you know, that was before anybody knew anything about PPP dollars and all these things. It was just the panic mode of, I don't know how long this is going to last. I need as much cash as I can get in the bank account um, because I don't know how it's all going to shake out. Uh, but yeah, there's been some close calls and that's definitely the most stressful part. And, and as you get bigger, it's the most stressful part, right? I mean, Last year, I had it on my sheet, but I forgot to talk about it. You know, we're finally out of COVID. Last year was one of those years where I was like, we're just going to operate this year and it's going to be great and we're going to be back to normal. And our raw material costs went up on average 35% last year. We couldn't raise the cost of our beer 35% to make up for that. Um, wasn't feasible. So grain, hops, aluminum, uh, you name it. We already know what goes on with our utility bills and how those have gone up. We use a little bit of water here. We use a little bit of electricity here. Um, and, and then, you know, with the Fed rates going up, we still have an SBA loan that paid for this expansion and the expansion of our tanks and our canning line. Um, so it was 35% cost increase across the board. And then, oh, by the way, interest rates are, are cruising through the roof right now. So um, hasn't gotten easier, but we're still here. So. Well, you know, it's, like I said, it's just every day there will be something and it's how do you manage that and continue to move forward. I'll be around. Most importantly, what's your wife's business? Miss Red Outfitters. <laughs> but, Good question. Okay. <laughs> but um, so I also have two business partners and we've we're about to hit 10 years together. And that's been, I've learned, I, I've found it to be an interesting experience having being three of us as opposed to two partners or sole proprietorship. I'm wondering if you have anything that you would share as far as the strengths of that or the challenges of that setup. Yeah, um, we get asked that question a lot. And it's when, before I started the brewery, I worked at a small private equity fund based in St. Petersburg. And when I first started there, there was a group of seven of us. Uh, but what we did there was um, we bought commercial debt from banks. Um, and then people like me would manage those deals, manage those relationships with who was now our borrowers. And um, all of them were small business owners. And the story time after time after time after time from me doing that for eight years was partnerships that went bad, um, you know, the, you know, divorce and breakups of partners, um, that's the majority, right? And so having a group of three people, um, two people's hard enough, three people's even harder. We are fortunate that we're still together and we like each other. Um, I think, I think there's two important things. One is we're all good at different things. 
and we all trust each other to do those things. So none of us are really stepping on each other's toes. And I think we learned within the first few years that we need to give, our, give each other a lot of grace of different personalities. Like this is Steve, Steve Duffy's our building construction operations, maintenance, keep the equipment running, build the new additions. Um, he's a very unique character. My personality is completely opposite from him. Um, I'm a very unique character. I can be a hard person to deal with too. But Steve and I have learned how to, like, that's just him. This is just me. We understand how to communicate with each other. We don't take offense to what's said. Um, and, you know, Chris, Chris manages everything that goes on on the brew side. What we're going to make, what the recipe looks like, um, how he manages those employees, uh, getting our numbers correct so that we can pay our federal and state taxes on excise. Uh, he does all that. Uh, label designs, final approval on those things. His, his sole like, ownership is in that area, and we try not to touch anything that has to do with that because we trust what he's doing. Um, he's still going back to you'll never find perfection. Sunshine City and Postcard Pilsner are, are our two best-selling beers. He's still constantly changing process and recipe on those. Like Almost every time you're having that beer, it's slightly different because he's still working on it. You know, This is 10 years later. So um, I think it's just giving each other some space and just trusting that you're gonna do that thing that I wanted you here for, you know, in the first place. And I think that's why we've been successful is because the three of us do very different things, but we share a common vision. Um, and hopefully we can continue that on uh, for many, many years. But um, we get in some arguments and the next day we work together and keep moving forward. So yeah, just, I don't know, we're lucky. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you again, Nathan. So happy to have you kick off our first CM Tampa Bay event. I do, we are gonna wrap up here shortly. Just a couple more things. Our volunteer team today. Can you guys wave your hands, stand? Yes, these are the people that really made this happen today. Our amazing roundhouse team. All of these people are volunteers and they're the ones that really brought this all together. Could not have done it without them. So thank you. If you are interested in volunteering, go to our webpage. We have an interest form, reach out to us. Us. We would love to hear from you. A couple other people I want. Oh, this is also our, of course, photo and video team. So just some faces here as well that you'll continue seeing. Just want to shout out as well a couple people here at Green Bench who just really believed in this uh, prior to me having any information on it other than it's this really cool breakfast lecture series. You're going to love it. Just trust me. Mickey, thank you so much for just believing in it. I randomly mentioned it to her one summer day and she was like, yeah, that sounds cool. Sounds up my alley. And because of that, we're here. So just want to say thank you for seeing that vision before it was fully realized. <laughs> um, and a couple other folks as well. Connor, thank you as well for seeing it, knowing about it. You can from Atlanta, he saw the Atlanta chapter, you know it would be great, so thanks. And then Mike Tony for, you know, not actually being a morning person, but waking up and letting us in at 7 a.m. this morning. <laughs> So a couple more things before we wrap up today. Bring a friend, make a friend. Bring a friend next time. Hopefully you enjoyed today. I want to see nods from everyone. Yes, oh, perfect. So everyone enjoyed today. If you did not bring a mug today, bring a mug next time. We're trying to be sustainable. We want to make sure we leave a small footprint here. We don't want to use any single waste. And so bring a mug next time. We're, obviously, we have a mug library. If you want to donate a mug, we'd love to grow our collection as well. If you have anyone that you want to recommend to us for bagels or for other breakfast items, for coffee, for beverages of any kind, please hit us up if you have speakers you want to see because you feel very confident and passionate about the things that you heard today. Let us know as well. Again, this is a collective for all of us um, to speak to a lot of the things that Nathan said, the attitudes that we see in the city. That's why Zach and I kind of felt like we could take this on. Um, we didn't feel like we would be judged necessarily. We thought we'd be in really open, comforting sort of embrace of our community. And that's what we found. So I really resonated with what Nathan was saying about just the enduring presence and attitudes of this city and also of Tampa. So just thank you all for being a part of it today. Um, 
Also, just a note, next month's is going to be rhythm. So we have next month's theme planned. Uh, rhythm is going to be really exciting, and we're going to be down in the Warehouse Arts District. It's going to be November 17th. Right now, it's either between the factory or where um, the architecture building that Daddy Cool used to be. So that's why it's TBA. It's going to be one of those places. Um, but it's November 17th. It's the Friday before Thanksgiving. So technically, we're breaking our fourth Friday efforts to accommodate we know you all mostly have off are going to be on vacation so come hang with us on a friday morning before thanksgiving and it'll be at 8 30 again with doors open so that is it for us today zach you want to come up we just want to say thank you all for having us zach you want to say anything else i think i think we put a very nice bow at the end of this i just want to reiterate though that transitioning from creative morning st pete to tampa bay we are making a very big effort to include uh, a larger amount of people, right? So if you in the audience have recommendations or you yourself uh, want to nominate yourself, uh, we're looking, I mean, we're, we're filling out next year. We're working with venues. We're trying to get other businesses involved that weren't before. Um, so if you have any recommendations or just want to be a part of this, uh, it's all voluntary. We're trying to build this community, right? We're trying to keep it going. So, uh, reach out to us on Instagram, uh, reach out to us on our email, which is, uh, Tampa Bay at creative mornings.com. Uh, we're here and we're excited about it. And we just are truly grateful for everybody that showed up here today. So thank you so much. And if you didn't get bagels, coffee or the other help yourselves, but have a great Friday, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Woo!